up guys dark lich you guys have asked me to make a tutorial so let's uh, get into it um, first thing is that I have this really awesome blood decal um, and it makes a really gushy gushy kind of smoosh on the floor okay so there's there's the decal um, from game textures um, now the mobs I'm shooting I have two basic models. They're actually modular models. They have a whole bunch of pieces, but we'll not get into that right now. Um, the other thing is, if you look, I have a head model and and a right and a left arm. So when I shoot them off the the model, it'll spawn those. So now, if we look at the uh, the character itself, there's a lot going on in here, but I'll just show you the basics. Um, I set the capsule component small on these and the reason why is so that way I could shoot the head off and not have it bounce inside the capsule or just this is the way I sort it out but the capsule half height is 50 this is important because I'm if you look I take the capsule component get the world transform I break the transform I take the location I subtract 50 on the Z but pass everything else through and the rotation if you look, I basically just take pitch, add 90, so it's rolling to the side like it needs to be for the reason, I don't know. If you drag and drop the deferred decal on the level, those are the coordinates it gives, that it gets a, a plus 90. So I did that, and that's how the decals show up. Now if you look, I set it the size 256 by 256 by 10. Now you can make it taller or shorter. I made it so it looks like there's a deep puddle, kind of, you know, leaves a smush around. But you can actually make it small, and I set the lifespan of 20. All right. So now if you look at the effect, let's save this. I'll show you inside the game. All right, we're going to go and shoot that particular zombie. You know, just clear them all up. But uh on the ground where they end up landing is a blood stain. But out here because it's so bright, you can't see it. The other thing you notice is that you can hear the bullets whizzing past me when they bounce off the wall. You can actually take your own head off. Turn the light on so I can see. Alright, so now, now that they're getting inside here, I'll show you. I have the decal unlit. Now he sees me, so he's coming at me, so. Now you see there's kind of quite a bloody mess in here. Um, and if you look, it's got the height of 10. Now if it made the height of 1, it would literally only stain the floor. So I know a lot of you guys, you know, they're like, well, how the hell do your zombies work? Um... It, that's kind of a three-part question if you're willing to invest the time I could show you so um, let's look at the pawn okay if you look there's a lot going on in here um, the most important thing is when the zombie starts in the level the first thing it does is turn off the collision for smacking and punching on you so that they don't walk around like slapping the shit out of each other um, the other thing is I made a, a custom event called set idle time, which is if it isn't been if it isn't dead Then it's gonna basically wait for me either two or ten seconds. It's a random It sets that delay then it also after the delay is expired double checks to make sure I haven't killed it while this timer is idling and If it is not dead no, it's missing ahead Then it will move to a random point and basically I, what I did was I basically dropped a whole bunch of target points around the level where they will randomly pick one of them and move towards it at between 2 and 10 seconds. So if you look, I'm basically looking, if you damage them or they spot you, it'll set a new target. If it's nothing, then it will just grab a random location, and then it will set that point and move to it. Okay, and if you look, it does an AI move to, and then it goes to set the idle all the time again. In other words, if it hasn't spotted you, it will wait between 2 and 10 seconds again and find a new spot to move to. If it does have a target, in other words, if it spotted you, it will continue to try and move to you. Under the components, if you look, I have a vision sphere, which if you look is attached to the head. 
see socket pip head and as the zombie looks around if you break this which I'll probably make bigger in the final it will say oh shit I see them let me go after them once you get close enough no it's once they've closed the distance then you would break this bubble and once you do that they start the attack so if you look all right um, you'll see on overlap which is basically how I'm doing the attacks so if we look there's one for the left hand one for the right hand depending on the animation I use there's one for the vision which I'm basically just checking versus the types of characters I have okay and then um, if it's a match no it's if it's not one of the other zombies then it will set you as a target and try and move towards you okay once it gets close enough it's gonna then check and see if you're within its attack bubble and that it's not dead and that it's not missing the arm it needs to attack you which in this particular model is the left arm which is the only one it attacks with if it's not missing the arm and you're in fact the target it's looking for then it will start punching the shit out of you and you will take damage um, after you know during the time it's swinging um, after the animation has passed the point where it hits you I turn the overlap off so it can't hit you again all right and if you look also I have um you know the attack bubbles checking again okay and once you once you've left the bubble see end overlap then I have it double check to make sure it's not dead and if it's not dead and it can't find you then it's gonna set out of time though it's look for something else to do and the zombies all do this same mechanics now I also have it so that when you do hit them it's gonna actually check and see based on where the bone is that you've hit it whether or not it's the head the neck the spine for a headshot or the arms or hands and it will basically hide that part of the of their anatomy by making the material blank uh, and then spawn a, a chunk. No, it's if you shot the arm off, it'll drop an arm. If you shot the leg off, it'll you know. Well, not in this particular one, but it'll actually do it. So if you look, see spawn actor severed right arm, severed left arm. You shoot the arm off, okay. And if you shoot the head off, well then you know I'm ahead of baby. His head popped off. It'll pop the head. It'll set the materials for the head, the hair, the teeth to invisible and then spawn the blood spurt it'll play the flop around animation and drop okay um, this is old we don't need it anymore so as you can see there's quite a bit going on inside this bad boy so let's compile that and save it uh, and I'll show you the respawn inside the level blueprint I have a routine first of all I have the Sun changing for the time of day and I have it pretty slow speed, so it's pretty close to you know time of day. It's about a one. It's about two times faster than our normal time of day. Actually, about four. Um, if you look, I basically when I've killed them after about 20 seconds, I set them hidden, and then I have this do the cleanup. And the reason why is because that way the number of zombies I have in a level will stay that number. All right. So instead of deleting them and then having to add them, I basically look to see once they're missing their head. After between 10 and 20 seconds, I have them hide, so they get to leave a corpse laying around for a small period of time. And then basically as I grab their controller, I save it, I unpossess the old mob, I destroy it. I set a delay of about two tenths of a second because it can't handle it doing it faster. And then I do rebirth. And if you look at that routine, okay, rebirth says grab one of the, the base target points outside the, the little building I have there randomly grab one make sure I've grabbed a valid one just in case spawn that particular mob which is pawn one okay um, for some reason when I was spawning them they were not colliding with stuff so you couldn't hurt them so I set collision response to block um, on the mesh and then I possess it with that that particular mobs controller so I don't have to create a new controller I'm saving the controller after they respawn they're gonna do the begin you know event begin again and try and wander around again and there's one for each of the three zombie classes which is basically one two and three um, and that's in the actual level blueprint now also here I have it so that when you hit the bracket key it will swap weapons because I have each weapon as a first-person character so I just basically swap the character alright so as you can see 
they're doing stuff based on which character you're doing and i'm just basically spawn that character delete the old one and then uh possess the new one so you're swapping characters now if you look we'll go into the game so you can see it all right see i'm on the ak-47 i'm now on the mp5 i'm now on the m107 barrett 50 cal Got to be careful with the 50 cal because the bullets, they actually uh, travel pretty far. So you can actually take your own head off if you're not careful. But, anyhow. Alright, so that's that. 